I prospect from wherever I am. The repetitious boredom, but it pays well, really well. I get excited to get on the phones. It's showtime. Attending this dinner and he's making 500,000 a year. And she said, yeah, but you're not. I'll never forget what I said. No, but I will be. So if I'm not prospecting, then I don't know what the next 30, 60, 90 days will look like. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Phone Warriors podcast with Rich and I here, and we have a fantastic guest that we are so excited about to introduce, Susan Heller from Bonita Springs, Fort Myers, Southwest Florida market. Welcome, Susan. Thanks so much, Dean and Rich. Great to be here. Yeah. So tell everyone a little bit about yourself, where you work, and, and how long have you been in the business and everything? So this is my 35th year in the business. And when I'm prospecting, I basically just say, oh, I've been in the business 20 plus years because I feel really old when I say 35, but it's it's the only thing I know. I kind of, my high school job was sales. I think I was born selling. So this was a natural path for me because I like to sell, I may as well sell the highest ticket item. Started in Pennsylvania. I got my first uh, sale in Philadelphia. I started, I joke, I say I started selling $35,000 row homes in Philadelphia. And one of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from the realtor that sold me my first house, Matthew Griffin, He's or uh, John Griffin. He said, the sooner you hire an admin and stop doing $5 an hour work, the sooner you're going to get ahead. Well, it's a whole lot more than $5 an hour that I pay my staff today, but it's it's true. We protect our time. So then I ended up buying the first office I worked in, and I had over 50 agents, and we sold Philadelphia and the suburbs. Then my father lived in Naples, Florida. He retired in 89, and I loved the weather. I loved the higher price point, and I loved my dad. So it was just a natural path again to move down to Florida at some point. So I moved here in 2001 and mm. I love the sun, the water, and the people are fabulous. It's been a great move for me and I enjoy it. It's a great market. I, so I serve as Naples, Bonita Springs, Estero, Fort Myers, all of Southwest Florida, and Naples through Fort Myers and the beaches. That's awesome. And Susan, what do you feel like is, um, you know, I know, you know, you've been a part of Phone Warriors for a little bit now. One of the things that I have, I've already gotten from you in terms of when we hear you prospect is that you're just command of the conversation. Where did you learn the skills that you have in terms of prospecting and just in general, the business that you really feel like honed in the, the uniqueness that you've turned yourself into to internalize what you've um, obviously who Susan Heller is today? That is such a great question, Dean. So I'm fortunate. My first job in high school was telemarketing. I've always been very comfortable on the phone, but Mike Ferry and his system are what caused me to really be very well scripted and, as you put it, command the conversation. When you have a script in front of you, and you guys know, I'm on the I'm on the calls with you. I hear you very well scripted also, but I think it just gives the call the natural progression. We don't ever forget what to say. We don't ever get into a conversation and not know what to say next. And Mike will tell us selling isn't telling, it's asking a series of questions. And our questions, they're one in a row, and it takes us through the logical conversation and gets us to the appointment, most importantly. And, and how would you say you learned these questions? How did you learn these scripts? What, like, walk us through the path of like, I know, yeah, you did sales all your life, but it was it second nature to you or was it very hard for you to read a script and actually stay on script and ask the questions, the hard questions. I fought the scripts because I had my own scripts. I was a realtor in Philadelphia and a broker uh, for 11 years before I moved to Florida. So mm. I was successful in what I was saying and doing. And then I started incorporating some of Mike's scripts in with my scripts. So I had a, you know, Susan Mike script. <laughs> and then I realized it works better. And I started role playing. And we all know when you're role playing, you can't change the script. And I was fortunate enough to coach one-on-one -on -one with Mike Ferry twice. And when you're coaching with Mike and you role play with Mike, you don't change one word. I'll, I remember we did a role play and I said, Mike, Sabrina. And he said, wait, 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 where in the script does it say to use our names? And I said, wow. He said, no, Susan, verbatim. And I said, okay. So it was a great lesson to me that, you know, mm. even one word, even the tonality, we get to a certain point. And we're all at that level that 
it's not the big things. It's the small things, the small tweaks. The I, I love being on the phone warriors because I'll hear someone say, I have a notepad right next to me when I'm prospecting. And I hear one of you great agents say something and I write it down. And, you know, I say, I'm going to use that again. And I try to give kudos when the person hangs up the phone and I say, wow, that was great. I wrote that down. And so it's listening to other top producers in the group. It's role playing with top producers. It's attending the Mike Ferry events, uh, the action workshop. They have, uh, you know, a lot of different programs. And again, we have the scripts right in front of us. So it's. That's it's amazing. So I, I, Susan, the one thing that I'm hearing you say, so like, I, and I've heard you say that, right? That you're like, oh, I like that line. I'm going to use it. So you're telling me that at your level, you've made millions of dollars in real estate. You've sold over what, uh, 1,500, 2,000 homes in your career. I'm sure more, even more probably. Over 4,000. Over 4,000 homes. Sorry. Thank you. It was it's a long, long time. Sold. I don't want to say yeah. how long I've been in the no, business. No, no, it doesn't, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I'd be like in Florida though, like 4,000 homes, that's incredible. Okay. But you are still, what I'm hearing you say is you're still learning. Like you're still open to suggestions and how you're sounding. Why do you feel like you still have that? And has that served you over time? It's a great question. Uh, so I just took Ann Baker's advanced script and skills program. And I took the original scripts and skills uh, probably in 2004 or five. I feel like when we stop learning and we stop improving, our skills will go down. You know, if I don't prospect for a week, it's like riding a bike. We can get back on. But, you know, when you start moving the pedals, it's a little rough until you get gliding or until you really get momentum. And that's that's what prospecting is. It's our momentum. If I miss a few days, I can be a little rusty. I shake the rust off, but it's listening to you guys. And, you know, the markets, they have their ups and downs. We have different times of the year. We just went through the holidays, for example. I'm going to wait until after the holidays. Who hasn't heard that one? So if I hear someone else handling it a little differently, I think oh, I should have said that when I spoke to Mr. Smith. So mm -hmm. it's it's really just staying sharp. Anybody can get to that level and it's staying at that level that when we've been in the business as long as we have, it's like Mike says, the repetitious boredom, but it pays well, really well. Do you get bored? I know it's repetitious, but do you get bored? Are you I always do. I admit that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of agents struggle, you know, just one year or five years with this getting burnt out and, you know, saying what, 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 like it's, you know, like you said, repetitious boredom, but like you said, it pays very well to kind of be bored. So how did you overcome that? Because it seems to me with that all wrapped up into one comes with a strong mental mindset. So how, how did you work through by gaining strength in your mindset to be like, this is what I have to do? I connected the dots between the money that I make and the tasks that I do and the service I provide. So if I don't prospect, I have a great work ethic. I'm lucky my father and mother taught me that young, but you know, I get up every morning, I go to work. There aren't really a lot of other options. And I, I say happy pays better. So when I get on the phones, I amp up my energy. People say, oh my gosh, the energy. You know, part of it is manufacture. The, you know, it, I get excited to get on the phones. It's showtime. And, you know, it really, it, it comes across. They say you have to have the smile. You should have a mirror in front of you so that you see when you're smiling because it, it does project. And I've heard that it projects more on the phone even than in person. In person, you bring the physical energy, but they can't see you on the phone. So you have to have the tonality even more so. But I love what I do. I am really blessed that I still enjoy prospecting. Pre-COVID, I wasn't really in a lot of groups, but I was very grateful that I had the prospecting groups that I do the connections that I have, the masterminds, the role plays, because we all kept each other's momentum up. And that's what I love about Phone Animal. I could go on there, or Phone Warrior, I could go on there just about any day of the week. I, I, I found you guys, I think it was September 1st, but it was a Sunday and nobody was on my role play group. And I thought, I want to prospect. And so I said, let me try Phone Warriors. Let me log in. And I love that because there were people around the clock. And I think, you know, logging in and seeing that there are people prospecting gives me more of a momentum. And I probably mm. prospected longer. And I'm sure some of the other people that were on prospected a little longer because we all fed each other's energy. 
And that's, that's what I love. That's what keeps mm. me going. It's this whole group that you guys have created. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank, we're grateful that you're a part of it. And actually one of the top members, obviously producing outsized returns that we both see. Um, so Susan, one of the things that I think a lot of agents get hung up on, and I've had, we've had multiple conversations around this with newer agents or agents that are in the, let's say the first like five years of their career. Now, what was your path when it came to number of deals, like, you know, rising versus not? Like, in other words, you've been in the, in the business for over 20 years, right? Was it like, oh, you'd hit the ground running in year one and you're producing 100 deals a year? Or did it gradually just come into this as you were making your processing effort happen and you just getting better and better? Like, what was the trajectory of your career, basically, on the size of the deals that you were doing? So it's interesting. I started in Philadelphia selling $35,000 row homes. You had okay. to sell a lot of them if you wanted to eat. And mm -hmm. I started part-time. I had a great job in the printing industry. I sold direct mail. And mm -hmm. I couldn't give up the salary. So I was recruited by a headhunter. And they said to me, well, Susan, we don't have to pay the fee if we let you go. So they let me go. I collected unemployment. And I said, this is my opportunity. I'm going to go real estate full time. And I jumped in and never looked back. I loved it. But it was strange because when I went from that full time job where I had to be in an office nine to five, Monday through Friday, and now I'm in a real estate office and I don't need to be anywhere anytime. There was no accountability. Um, and I said to the broker, well, what do I do now? I mean, I came in part time. I did nights and weekends. I did really well. But so it was setting up that schedule and just, I'd say my first year I probably did, I did really well because they were little houses and I would run, I would run nights and weekends. So, mm. and I started in my twenties. So I probably did 30, 40 deals my first year, probably half part-time and the other half full-time. And I, I mean, I had, I had months that I did, you know, 15, 20 transactions in Philadelphia, but you know, the houses were two minutes apart. We could walk from one to the next. They were row houses, so yeah. it, was, it was pretty easy. I did. I learned, and it's nice, I guess, because I have that background of doing a volume business, doing a lot of numbers, but they were super low sale prices. So when I moved to Florida, not only did I get to spend more time with my dad, raise my sale price, but if I could raise the sale price and still do the numbers, it was a win-win. I mean, I so, hear, well, whatever. I was going to say, I hear that in... And what you were saying outside of many things, but the one thing that stuck out to me was you put yourself on a schedule. I feel like a lot of realtors mm -hmm. out there, they think it's easy to come in at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., work for two, three hours and sell high volume, which, listen, there might be that one or two person out there that actually can do that. But I hear that you put yourself on a schedule. Sounds like you treated real estate like a true genuine nine to five where things were sound like it was blocked out. And then you were successful off of, of a structure. Do you feel like, or do you feel like your success to be able to go from, you know, 15 houses a month? Was that pure, purely like, um, like the hustle in you? Was that just, Hey, I need to go, 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 sell, 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 sell. Or is that because you put the time in, from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. the prospect, you built up that pipeline and then you kept going. So how does it look like for, you know, an experienced agent that's looking to get to your level and anybody who's looking to be at your level? So rather than say what I did, because I made a whole lot of mistakes, if we could just fast forward to when I joined Mike Ferry, because that was when I really got a schedule and a system. I took the prospecting program at the time. And one of the most important things I learned from the program and through Mike Ferry was to have a set schedule. I used to be that 10 a.m. person. I was young. I would get up late. I would work nights. And in Philadelphia, people worked Monday through Friday. They were done at five. So I was working during the day, but my showings were nights and weekends. I came to Florida. It was reversed. They're all retired. Happy hour starts at four. They don't want to look at houses. So it was a totally hmm. different schedule. And I prospect in the mornings now. I would say the, the faster you master your morning schedule, your prospecting, it's got to be set in stone. I have a role play at 7.30, 7.45. I'm on the phone. I don't stop until 11 or 12. Now I'll take a break. I'll get a cup of coffee, clear the mind a little bit. But, you know, if you can set the prospecting time, the appointments follow. That's And when, if you don't have appointments, you know, you don't go to the beach, you go back to work because it's still the work day. So there's that, that mindset 
that work ethic, that commitment to building your business. And I'll never forget one of the things that Mike Ferry told us early on was, if you work for five years, like no one else will, you can live the rest of your life like no one else can. And so we have that opportunity and we can design our lives and our businesses. We can work as much or as little. We can make our income is going to commensurate with the amount of effort that we put in and the service we provide. Was there anything, Susan, that you feel like from your corporate background and being in the, you know, selling direct mail, like I think you said, right back in, you know, way back in the day, but like before you got into real estate, did that help you with the structure of understanding the importance of holding yourself to a, a schedule or, or was it more of just your upbringing in general? Like, or what was the, how, how, did, how did you have a proclivity to like, just being like accepting the fact of what Mike was saying. When I went to the first Mike Ferry seminar, it was like drinking from a fire hydrant. I mean, there was so much information. It was nothing like I had ever heard in real estate. It was like a real job. It was, you know, it was exciting because I saw, I came in, I thought $250,000 was the ceiling. I thought that I had arrived, that was it. You know, here's this big fish walking into a small, small, you know, or actually a small fish walking into a big pond thinking they were a big fish. So I was quickly humbled by the Karen Bernardis that are making five million dollars a year. And I'm thinking 250. Michael spit on the stage for that. So, you know, it, it really and I went to a dinner. And there was a gentleman there. His name was well, I won't say his name. He was a Florida realtor. And, you know, he was very relatable. He was just, you know, every other guy, but he wasn't somebody that I looked at and said, I can't do that. He was somebody that I looked at and said, if he can do it, so can I, um, you know, not overly well-dressed, not overly well-spoken, but it was a guy that was making over 500,000 a year. And I'll never forget. I called a girlfriend on my way in and I said, I'm, I'm attending this dinner and he's making 500,000 a year. And she said, yeah, but you're not. Never forget what I said. No, but I will be. Mm. And I said it with such conviction. Mm. And then I knew my next step would be a million. So it was it was just having those goals like Mike teaches us with those goals. But there is one thing that I wanted to point out from my printing background. I will never forget Harriet Weiss owned the company I worked for. Mm -hmm. And on Fridays, I was young. I was in my 20s. We were ready to hit the road and go to the Jersey Shore. But on Fridays at about five or 10 of five, she would walk through the off call. And that was like nails on a chalkboard to me. One more call. I've got like one foot out the door. So, but that one more call, I cannot tell you how many times that resulted in an appointment or a sale. It just happened to me this last week. I thought of Harriet Weiss. It was like 7.20. I don't call after 7.30 and I'm, I'm done. I'm kind of drained. I'm thinking, I'm just going to knock off early. And Harriet's in my ear. One more call. I set the appointment. And I do something that has been so super powerful for me. When you don't have that energy, when you've worked three, four hours in the morning prospecting, but you want to get back on the phone. I call it a power hour. I challenge myself. Can I do one more hour? One hour is Mm. not much, right? But there's also something in that time frame of, I only have one hour to make it happen. I don't have eight, nine hours to make it happen. I have one hour. Mm. When I do a power hour, I typically will set one to two appointments in that hour. It's it's prime time. It's somewhere between four and 7.30. But, you know, I get on there. I affirm. All right, let's get this together. I'll grab somebody from either Phone Warriors or my other hangout. And we'll, and, and Matt Starsick would call me on a Sunday. Prospect tonight, power hour. Sometimes he'll text me, power hour. And, you know, it's that challenge of who doesn't have an hour to build their business? And it's usually highly effective. Uh, uh, So here's something that I I just, that's super powerful what you just said. I hope everyone hears what you just said, because that is, it's the power of one more. But okay, let's just, let's just, let's just call it for what it is right now. We're in the year 2024, if you can believe that, it's crazy. But this is, you know, it's after COVID now, a few years, right? We have all this technology, AI, there's all this stuff coming in to the space of prospecting, or at least using the phone as a tool in order to garner business in the real estate space. How have you been able to keep away all the distractions in the shiny, the shiny penny syndrome? Like, how have you been able to hold, like, how, how do you handle distractions in Susan's life? you know, overall with everything we have going on today. I don't have a choice. It's my job. You know, what else am I going to do? It's Mike keeps it pretty simple. We prospect, 
we set appointments, we go on appointments, we take listings and we repeat, we call people, we tell them what we've done. So it's at this point, I don't want to get lost in the weeds. I don't want to worry about what if. I mean, I do have people on my team that are, you know, involved in the AI. There are a lot of different things coming down the pike, but I, I keep my focus. And that's, you know, until there is something else that's more important for me to be doing, but it's the income generating activities. That's right. Well said. Well, very well said. How many appointments do you go on a, a day now, Susan, on average? So I'm typically setting one to three appointments a day. I'm in prime season right now. New Year's, I set four. The second, I set four. I think that Friday, I set four. So, you know, it, it it's anywhere from two to four usually. Now, we will cancel them if when we do the prequal, if they're not motivated, if they're not priced right. And sometimes we'll take the motivation over the price, but we weigh it out. If the motivation is super strong, then maybe they can start a little bit higher. But I I go on some of the appointments, but now you said Veronica obviously is one um, you know person that you work with or partner with there. So what is your team or I guess your, your structure as a business right now look like? I have a small team. I owned a brokerage. I owned Remax here and I owned Century 21 in Philadelphia. I don't ever mm -hmm. want to do that again. And <laughs> it was a lot of time and money. I was not profitable. There are a few out there that are amazingly profitable who we know. Uh, but I really enjoy the sale as well. So I, I decided I want to have a backup so that if I am either double booked or for some reason cannot be on the appointment. Even when I've worked for other companies, there has always been one or two other listing agents in the company that I would seek out and say, hey, if I set the appointment, would you be willing to go out on the listing appointment? You go take the appointment, present, get the signature, drop it back with my team, we'll process it. I keep 80, you get 20. Hmm. They will do it every day of the week because hmm. for an hour to go present and get 20% of the commission, especially hmm. people that are good presenters that don't necessarily want to prospect or don't have a database. Interesting. So you actually refer out business more often and with all the appointments that you make. I mean, think about that. Eight guys, do you hear that? Eight appointments in two days. So eight appointments in two days. So you're not going on all those. You're actually, you're, you're almost leveraging out your time to say, look, I could be on the phones and making all of these appointments keep, continue to go. And you have trusted partners that are actually able, that are skillful enough to close, I'm assuming, uh, you know, for the signature and actually get the listings that you're producing. That, that's, exactly. that's what I'm understanding. Got yes. It. Incredible. And did you train them or how, how do you have the confidence to be able to say, hey, here, close the deal? I'm laughing because Veronica started with me two weeks before the hurricane a year and a half ago. And I knew she had been in Oregon, but I didn't know her skills. I didn't know her listing style. Um, hurricane came, no power no water, nothing. I evacuated and I'm still prospecting from the East coast of Florida. I went to get power so we could remain in business and I'm sending her out on appointment after appointment after appointment. No one else was working and she's bringing them back. We, wow. we are a great team. So leap of faith sometimes, but in a perfect world, yes, hurricanes aside, uh, I know who they are. I know their track record. It's kind of a small town of realtors, even though we have 12,000 agents, so I would, I would know their skill level. I was fortunate I had uh, CJ Henderson that worked hand in hand with Gary Keller. She was my listing partner for probably two years. I would set them, she would go out and get them. We were quite happy with that arrangement for, I'd say, I guess it was 20, 21, 22, somewhere in that range. Wow. And when you've got a really good solid team, you know, if you put ego aside, do the sellers really care if it's Susan or Dean or Rich? I mean, they really honestly don't. I thought that in the beginning, but you know, if I say, hey, you know what? The best person to meet with you, the most familiar, he actually lives in your community or, oh, Rich just sold or Dean has a buyer. But I typically will just say, it'll either be myself or Veronica. Sometimes they ask, but I would say one out of 10. The other nine don't care who I'm sending. They've, they want a good agent. They've established a rapport and a connection. It's highly competitive in my market. Highly. I mean, we've got right. at least 25 to 30 prospectors. So wow. have you ever thought about 
leveraging your activity, your high skill set with maybe ISAs or any other cold calling services that are out there? Or it's funny, I'm laughing. Yeah. Earlier, I made a, a slip and I said phone animal. I had hired Phone Animal years ago to do prospecting for me. I don't know if you know that company. They're out of the Philippines. I've but unfortunately, yeah. it was not it was not it was not good. I mean, their their goal was to get leads. And then I had to follow up with these leads that were not leads. Oh, right. if they could get a really high price, would we sell? Well, maybe. That's not a real lead right. because we can't get the price. And they're just they're just trying to make an appointment for me to call. And I want qualified appointments. So the answer to your question is, so one of my jobs right out of high school, I did telemarketing through high school. I ran a telemarketing room. So I've thought about recreating wow. the prospecting school and having my own telemarketing staff. So there are a few things that I've thought of over the years, but as I said earlier, I compete with about 25 or 30 other agents and a lot of the other agents have ISAs. They don't sound as good. It's not us. It's not, you know, they don't have hmm. the skill level. No matter how much time you spend with them, you're not going to give them Dean hmm. in a couple weeks or months. They're not going to become rich until, until they've got the, the experience. So that's the hard part. They don't really see when the gold is there. And I, I think I heard Dean do it the other day, but you know, sometimes you hear something in that conversation that says, I'll never forget one. The man was very proud, $2 million house. He said something about the mortgage company. I said, what's going on with the mortgage company? And he said, oh, well, long story short, he was in default, hadn't paid the mortgage, but he doesn't have to sell and he's not going to give it away. But for the bank will come and take it. There'll be a sheriff at your door if we don't coordinate the short sale. So it's funny because it's these little nuances that our trained ears pick up on that others don't. So I have thought about that and I've done that in many cases, mm -hmm. but I think the best thing is to just have someone that asks a simple question. Are you thinking of selling? And if they raise their hands, give me the, the 10 or 15 raised hands to call rather than having them try to convert to an appointment. Just let me know if there's any interest whatsoever. Right. Right. Who has a pulse, let's say. So Susan, where is Susan Heller? I mean, if you're looking at your vision for the next, call it three years, five years, even 10 years, if you've gone that far out thinking wise, right? Being self-aware, um, where, what's next for Susan Heller now in your, in your next chapter or, or, you know, life design, let's say. Interesting that you say that. Um, I joined, I thought I would retire Remax until I stepped into a mastermind call, um, Ed Kaminsky, Tina Call, uh, mm -hmm. Nicole Levine, some of our our friends invited me to this mastermind call and it was on a Monday and I was absolutely blown away. Mm -hmm. And I thought I will end up at EXP someday. Mm -hmm. And it was sooner rather than later. Mike had told me not to open my own brokerage. I bought two Remax franchises and he said, Susan, <laughs> for the love of God, don't open the businesses. You don't need the brick and mortar if you had to buy the franchises. So in my mind, we compromised. Mike would say I didn't listen to him, but I only opened one. But it was incredibly expensive, a lot of fees, a lot of costs. And I looked at the EXP model and there are so many things I love about it. So this doesn't turn into an EXP call. That is definitely on my radar. I'm excited. I want to share. I want to help okay. others build their careers. Doesn't mean I need to own the brokerage. It doesn't mean I need to tell them what to write on line 14 of the contract. It means that I can help coach them on skills. I can help them build their businesses on a higher level than I remember I was in a, I was going to an event with another Remax broker. He was taking calls for the two hours that we were in the car going up to Tampa. And I said, what the heck did I just get into? I don't want to be him. I don't want to be taking agent calls 24 seven, but you know, to be able to have an hour with an agent or with a group and to do a mastermind and, you know, to be challenged by them and to be able to help younger, newer agents, the way I was helped, the way you two were helped, the way you two are giving back now, just to be able to really give back to the industry and the community that's been so good to me. And I will probably always prospect, whether it's an hour here or there, it doesn't need to be as structured and as scheduled, but I'm going to build something that I may never let go of. I mean, I we look at some of these people that are in their 80s. I don't need to be closing 100 transactions in my 80s, but you know, I, I may take 50 deals that fall in my lap as past client referrals, and I may... I may pull up a 
January 1st prospecting blitz with some of my greatest friends or maybe with some of the people that are in my downline. But, you know, to be able to have fun with it, that's that's where I'm going with it, to give back and keep having fun. That's so cool. That's awesome. That is amazing. And that is very big self-aware of what you are looking to do because not many people want to give back. Everybody wants to hold all the cards to themselves thinking that we have that magic answer. But at the end of the day, it's all around us. And the people that are the biggest cheerleaders and the, the people that just give, 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 they're going to see things back tenfold. And I have no doubt that you'll be getting people thrown your way past clients. You'll be getting, you like you said, you'll pick up the phone for one hour and you'll get five appointments and pass them over. And then guess what? Like you said, the people that are in your organization, they're going to be, they're going to have somebody to look up to because it's very rare that anybody, I don't know, 90%, 95% of real estate agents, they don't prospect, right? They have the magic pill. Hey, listen, let's do these leads. Let's do this. Let's do that. Whatever it might be. But if you can show somebody, you lead them to the water, you show them how to drink and kill for the rest of their lives. They're going to be able to do that hand over hand year after year and naturally progress. 20%, like, you know, Mike Ferry says 20% a year, you know, before, you know, in five years, you're going to be doing hundred transactions. So it's very, very, um, you know, I don't know the correct word, heartwarming or very nice to hear that that's the goal. That's, that's the vision because yeah, uh, it's very sincere to me. It's very genuine what you just said. Right. I think that's the feeling that I got from hearing what you just said and how you said it. So, um, and so Susan with that, with everything, just to wrap it up, last question that I have for you, which I always love asking, with all of our guests is if you could t say, picture yourself in a time machine. Okay. And you're going back to Susan Heller of 20, 25 years ago. Okay. Knowing what you know now, but you can only say one thing, one thing to Susan Heller of that time. What would that one thing be? Hire a coach. Wow. Was nice. expect that one. <laughs> Two things, hire a coach and join a prospecting group. Cause it's, it's, Again, it's the whole system. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have the scripts, if you don't have the motivation, if you don't know what to say, if you don't have the confidence, if you don't have the mastermind group, a coaching program will give you all of that. To me, my favorite word is integrity. Because to me, that is an all-encompassing word. It's honesty, it's loyalty, it's, you know, it's, it's being true to your word. But coaching is that all-encompassing system or program. And I wouldn't know you guys if we hadn't all been in the Mike Ferry system. And, you know, I love Mike. He's the one I would recommend. But if Mike's not your cup of tea, hire another coach, but do something to get your accountability, to get you fired up, to get you the knowledge and the skills that you need. And, Boom. you know, it, it's, yeah. And, and, I, and awesome. I'll everybody with this, I know we didn't touch too much upon it, but if you want to know somebody who works very hard, very diligently. Um, Susan is definitely somebody you guys should look up to because whether she's at an event in the West Coast, she's waking up at certain times and she's prospecting. Whether she's going away on vacation, guess what? She's finding that half hour to hour to prospect. I learned in this call, if you have no power and you lost from a hurricane, she's going to the other side <laughs> to prospect because she knows the business and everything needs to keep going. So I've never heard anybody that was that dedicated to their work and clearly the results definitely have shown. And um, at Susan Heller, the last thing that I will say is for all the referrals that want to come your way to down to Florida, what is the best form of communication to get in contact with you? Text me 239-248-8000. And just the one thing that I wanted to add to that, Rich, thank you so much for saying that. And I really give so much credit to the lifestyle I have being the reward of all the hard work of prospecting. So if I'm not prospecting, then I don't know what the next 30, 60, 90 days will look like. So if I am going to take time off, I prospected on the first of the month in Italy. I prospected on New Year's Day. I mean, it's the commitment. You guys were there on New Year's Day. We were all prospecting together virtually. And that's what the group gives us. So you know, just, you can take vacations. The money we make allows us to do that. But I joke, I say, you know, I'm still working. I just have dinner in a different place with a different group of people, but I'm still working in the morning. I still get up and, and do my prospecting. 
So that's so awesome. That's what amazing. a fantastic ending to this beautiful conversation. Susan, thank you so much for being our guest today. And, uh, and guys, any Fort Myers, greater area, Bonita Springs, you got Susan Heller right there for you. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. Thanks so much, guys. It's been fun. Thank <laughs> you.